water has come up. We are now standing in the front yard of the house. There's water everywhere. Good evening from Central Texas, the scene of utter devastation, a natural disaster of epic proportions after days of relentless historic rain triggered raging floods. The river here swelling to at least 45 feet, rushing over its banks, demolishing homes and businesses right off their foundations. Right now, there are entire neighborhoods under feet of mud and water, including here in the tiny town of Wimberley. We were, we were at home, Pam and I, um, we were watching TV in the living room as we often do. And we started seeing notices on uh, TV alerts as to some weather condition, flooding, rain. Near Blanco, of nearing now 13 inches of rainfall, really starting yesterday afternoon, and just numerous showers and storms sat over southern Blanco County. All that heavy rain upstream now moving downstream. I don't think we, any of us, had a, a complete grasp or understanding the magnitude of the amount of water coming down the river, you couldn't really comprehend it. Um, radio traffic was, there's a wall of water coming. It's it's a 40 foot wall of water and, and 40 feet, okay. But what does that really mean coming down the river? You, you've been here at Cave a lot longer than me, one of the longest employees here. Have you ever heard of anything like that? I have never, ever heard of the bridge over I-35 even being touched by water. This is from the National Weather Service. At 31 feet, quote, disastrous life-threatening flooding will flood over 100 homes and businesses in and near Wimberley in the Blanco River and Cypress Creek floodplain. Many homes flood severely downstream in the lower Blanco and San Marcos River floodplain near San Marcos. This level will reach lower rural homes in the floodplain above Blanco to San Marcos and trap and drown hundreds of livestock. Roads near the river are extremely dangerous. That's at 31 feet. Add 10 feet to that. We don't know what's gonna happen. This is the first time this has ever been this high in history. We were woken up uh, by a phone call from a friend who uh, works for ABC in Austin and was on call that night. He said, well, we're having a monolithic millennial event here. He thought that the water might actually be going into our home. And I, I told him that was impossible. We're 40, 45 feet above the river. And he said, look, I'm here. I'm, I'm telling you what I'm seeing. It's literally Armageddon going on. We witnessed pieces of homes floating by. Uh, we witnessed the cabins of 7A be ripped off their foundations. We saw cars with their lights on in the river. We heard um, what sounded like explosions, but there were these large trees that used to be here, uh, three, four feet in diameter, uh, that the force of the water was just snapping in two. We were behind the curve on those initial 911 calls, and now there's no catching up. Uh, if it weren't for neighbors helping neighbors, we would have lost many more lives than we did that night. Some of the people had to sit overnight you know, it might have been a, a flashlight that that's the only way we knew that they were okay. And then when there was no flashlight, we were left to wonder, are they okay? Did they get washed away? That whole not knowing, um, it was terrifying. It was absolutely terrifying. You know, you used to be able to kayak down the, the Blanco and, and not be able to see some of the houses because of the tree lines. And now you see houses. Trees are gone. Those trees will take years to come back. The river had uh, ripped up and taken uh, 64 trees off of our property and uh, just left it. It went from a Costa Rican rainforest to a a bald Arizona desert cliff.
when we got back over here, started getting back to work, um, somebody was driving by and pulled in and said, we see you're a wood shop. Would you be interested in some of the trees from the flood? And we thought, sure, three or four trees, that'd be great. And said, okay, well, follow us down to uh, the camp, the Texas State Camp, which is at the end of this road, Flight Acres. And we went down there and it was, I want to say two football fields of, of material. We really took something that was, that was a tragedy and just very unfortunate um, to be able to lose our shade and be able to lose our magical trees. And uh, we were fortunate to be able to, to purchase trees and to acquire trees. Clients are bringing those trees. They lost all their trees in their front yard on the river, lost their home, lost everything. And now they're rebuilding. And so they're visiting with us and working with us. So we'll take a tree um, that came from the flood. We'll mill it. We'll talk about the pieces that they want to build. We'll kiln dry it. Um, and then we'll design and build a, an amazing piece of furniture and then deliver it back in to their home that they're rebuilding. And they get a sense of the tree that was in the front yard is now in the living room or it's a beautiful headboard that they get to walk into and snuggle in every night. Um, so it's, it's a real incredible, you know, um, responsibility too, to be sensitive to the, to the trees and, and, and not just, it's just another pile of wood. That's very important to me. I'd known Phil for several years, primarily from salvaging uh, fallen pecan trees in our yard. We live along the creek. We knew we wanted in our rebuild to, to recognize the flood. We didn't, we didn't want to erase it from the history. And began working with Phil. And the gate that you see behind me was one of the first pieces we did. Working with me, <clears throat> bringing in, he's like, okay, Phil, we want to design some cool things with the flood wood. And so we've done a really unique gate that's an entrance to his home. And then we did cypress stair treads leading up into his home and incorporated cypress into his floor and into a ceiling to create an ambient, you know, beautiful uh, hallway. Um, and just the creativity of not only working with what his, his visions were and then my creativity to be able to pro provide that uh, was really amazing. And uh, now he has this beautiful home back and he's off the ground. So he'll, uh, it's just an incredible way to do it, I feel. Philip is an artist. We have artists in our family uh, and what he is able to do with wood, all kinds of different wood, all kinds of styles, all kinds of pieces. Um, it, he's supremely talented. The Andersons are awesome. They uh, had had their house up by Fisher Store Bridge and uh, lived there for years, loved it, incredible. Flood took it all out, took their trees on the bend and, um, and leveled their home. Um, they were in the process of rebuilding and had um, heard about me and showed up one morning with some from market days with these antique hand carved um, piano legs and they said hey we heard about you and we want to lost everything in the flood and we want you to design a dining table for us. Two cypress slabs live edge on the side with a pecan in the middle and that way the pecan was like the river was running through the cypress and we used both woods in order because they lost both types of trees. We decided to build the house. It was like we talked to him some more yeah. and, and he was able to, to create some neat things. But I mean, he's, he's I mean, very it's, talented. It's, it's nice having somebody that's artistic and just great with wood, but he's just a great person, he and his wife. And it's yeah. just easy to do business with somebody like that. The Webbers are incredible. They had lost their home in the flood and their trees and everything else. Um, when they rebuilt, um, had talked to me about providing some pieces. So there was, a, we took one of their logs and, and I'd cut it up and created this incredible vanity, uh, kind of wall to wall, nested in the, the nice front bathroom. They had created a, uh, a big kitchen island and most of it was granite and marble and that type of thing, but they wanted to integrate half of that into wood with kind of a waterfall edge. We want to continue building things for people. We want, people are still building in Wimberley. It's growing really fast. Um, and 
There's people that don't know about the flood and there's people that don't know we have this flood wood, but we have a lot of it left. And Cypress is such a beautiful wood. And so I like the idea of keeping it close and um, we're really still having that Cypress to be able to live back in this town. We live on the Blanco River and there's all these amazing trees and we would never harvest those trees. Those you know, provide shade and we're swimming underneath them. But when Mother Nature comes and takes them down, what are we gonna do with them? Are we gonna shred them? Are we gonna just burn them? I think it's an opportunity for us to extend the life of that tree that was just incredible, beautiful. And what we get to do is create amazing furniture that has energy and bring that energy back into the homes that were lost or that are being rebuilt or um, and then it continues the life of that tree. So it becomes furniture, it becomes heirloom pieces that they pass down from generation to generation. And uh, it's an opportunity to, to help the tree continue its life. It's an, it's an honor to be able to uh, work with the tree, kind of listen to the board. Sometimes the board will say, hey, I want to be a table when I grow up. Sometimes the board will say, hey, I want to be a bench or a coffee table. So uh, I think just being aware and, and uh, being connected to the trees and the wood and being able to create and manifest incredible pieces is, is, a, is an honor. The fact that uh, these things were saved and repurposed and not burned and not chipped and not thrown, you know, in a landfill somewhere, uh, that was absolutely the right thing to do. And, you know, and, and look, at what, look at what came out of that.